Welcome to Expats Everywhere. Can you tell me your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself? All right. Uh, so my name is Kasia Panasiewicz. I was born in Poland and grew up in Canada. I've taught English in Poland and in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so do you have a Canadian and a Polish passport? Yes. All right. Um, what was it like working in Saudi Arabia? Three things. It's very difficult to get anything done because Saudi is a very frustrating place to live in. But at the same time, you get paid the most out of any other places and you get to live on a compound, which is very nice because it's kind of like living in high school. Okay, can you explain what a compound is? Apartment buildings, it's like a neighborhood for expats, basically. It's surrounded by a wall, there's usually apartment buildings, some sort of a gym, some sort of a rec center. And yeah. you can live like a normal feeling life on this compound? Yep. Yeah. You As soon as you uh, drive into the compound, you can take off your abaya and just do whatever you want. What is an abaya? Ah, an abaya is the black robe that you wear over your clothes when you leave a compound. Okay, and all women have to wear this? Yes, all women have to wear this. They don't have to cover their head, but it's preferable if you do. I don't, but I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's talk about work. Uh, wh what kind of job do you have? I work at a university at a prep program, so it's a year after high school and before university where the students study English, um, math, and whatever subjects they need to know before they go to university. Okay, do you teach math in those subjects or you no. just teach English? I'm ju I just teach English. Okay, and uh, what area of Saudi Arabia do you work in? Where is this? University? Right, so Saudi is a very big country, and Riyadh, which is the capital, is in the middle. It's supposed to connect the east and the west, so Riyadh is in the middle of the desert. It's a very modern new city because it's supposed to connect the whole country, but we live in in the east, it's very close to the coast, it's about an hour and a half, but it's also in the biggest oasis in the world. It's a very old part of Saudi Arabia. So the people here, it's kind of like living in a small village, but this is a very old part of Saudi, so it's actually quite interesting. There's some things to see here. And people are nicer, and they're not as used to expats, so they're a lot nicer. Okay, so you said there are some things to see. What kinds of things can you see? Oh, okay, there's um, there's a small village right outside of Hofu, the city where we live in. It's called Algara. There's a mountain there. There's some caves that are really nice. There's um, a lot of uh, pottery shops, and there's a lot of places where you can buy uh, Bedouin things like carpets and curtains and things like that, so that's nice. All right, let's move back to work. What does a typical day look like for you? It's a very, very easy and nice job. Right? You get on the bus, the bus drives you to work, we teach for two hours, for 50 minutes, there's a 10 minute break in between, and then we have two office hours, and then we teach for another two. So really we teach for hours in a day. Okay, and you said the bus takes you, you get on public transportation or what no, bus? It's a bus, it's our bus, the compound bus. Okay, so, so it's a private get, bus. Yes, it's a private bus with our driver, the same driver drives us every day. So we know the driver, it's our bus. And is that common for compounds in Saudi Arabia? Yes. Okay, so they have a private bus. So you pretty much, you have transportation, that you, can, you have everything taken care of, really. We, there's usually a person in each company that will help you take care of your visa stuff, so there's not much you have to do on your own in Saudi, okay. which is nice, except for maybe banking. Right, so you mentioned visa. What is it like uh, getting a visa? Did you get a visa through Canada or Poland? Okay, we got a visa in Poland, but through the Canadian Embassy. Okay, and what was that process like? The visa for Saudi is a very complicated process. You need medical tests, you need to get your degrees verified, you need to get a whole bunch of papers, background checks. It, we had a stack like this of uh, papers. Okay. And it took us about a month to get it all together, and we, we were pretty quick. So if you're planning to come to Saudi, and you get the job, you have the interview, you need to start with the visa stuff as soon as you can. Good. All right, a lot of people are interested in the money that you can make in Saudi Arabia. So 
Can you give us a range of what someone should expect to earn? Um, I'm thinking between thirty and forty thousand dollars a year is reasonable. You you can get a job easily that pays that much. All right. If, and if you have a master's degree, you can get a job that gets that pays more. And can you save a lot? Yeah, you pretty much don't spend any money on anything. Why is that? You uh, well, you live on the, on a compound, so you don't pay for any electricity. You don't have any bills really. The only things you pay for are food and whatever entertainment you want to provide for yourself. And it's Saudi, so there's not a lot of entertainment. So basically, you're only spending money on food, maybe restaurants. All right, and is that expensive or cheap? Very cheap. Very cheap. All right, so how much money should someone bring just to start up when they first move to Saudi Arabia? We brought, my husband and I brought a thousand dollars, but you don't even need that much. Because you're going to come, you just need money for food for the first month. All right. And clothes. You need to bring clothes to work, especially women, because the men usually have to wear a tie and dress professionally, and women need long skirts, long sleeves. So. Okay, so that's the. Clothes. Those are the clothes that you should bring for work. Like, what other clothes should you bring? Just like, what's the weather like? Very hot all the time. <laughs> In the winter, it gets a little. It gets surprisingly cold, but. You know, it's still hot. <laughs> okay, so what should a woman bring um, to cover herself in the winter? Huge, like a big coat or a no, little sweater? No, I would say just bring like sweaters. Maybe you probably need one coat. Sometimes it gets to like zero, maybe a couple. Of okay. What are some things that someone should bring that they can't find in Saudi Arabia? You can pretty much find anything unless you're very specific cosmetics that you like. But they have, for women, they have a lot. Of At the beginning, we missed like some sauces, some food, but now they have them. So, and it depends on where you are. If you're in Riyadh, I'm pretty sure you can get anything you want. All right, good. Yeah. How about safety? Is Saudi safe? Do you feel safe? I've never felt not safe in Saudi. Recently, they, there have been some safety concerns with um, ISIS in Jordan, but I've never felt unsafe in Saudi. My husband and I used to do a lot of things outside of the compound, and I've never really felt unsafe. However, in Riyadh, I know people are more conservative, so you do have to cover your hair, and people are not as friendly as here. Here, I think, because there's not that many expats, people are very surprised to see you, and, and they're more interested in you. How do you meet people, whether expats or Saudis? Hmm. It's difficult to meet Saudis. It's just, I guess, your students, and you can't really socialize with students that much, other than the ones that are already done university. But on expats, it's just a compound, so it depends. If you want to live on a big compound or a small compound, on a big compound, you meet people like anywhere else when you move into a new building or a new neighborhood. But on a small comp compound like ours, you probably, in a year, get to know everyone a little bit. Yeah. All right, and what kinds of things do you do for fun? This is also up to you, really. The reason why I enjoy Saudi so much is because you make a lot of money, you save a lot of money, you, and you have a lot of free time on your hands to pursue things that you're interested in. I do crafts, so I decorate the compound and I organize different events. And because people have nothing to do, they're willing to do things. So you, you just need to pursue hobbies. All right, what kinds of events do you organize? We do Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, we do potlucks, we do Halloween parties, whatever, really, people. Like doing. Okay, so your compound tries to um, have something going on for all these holidays to kind of mm -hmm. make it feel like home. Yeah, because our compound is a little different than a whole bunch of other compounds because the people that work for our company live on the compound. So we all know each other and the compound is our space. When you live on compounds with where there's 2,000 people and they all work for different companies, it's probably a little bit different. All right. Would you say that Saudi Arabia is a good travel hub? It's the best travel hub, really. Why is that? Because you're close to every place in the world, and pretty much every year that we've been here, 
there has been one place, one really cheap place to fly to, for example, for Eid, which is the longest break in the year in October, September. So the first year we got here, we flew to Sri Lanka for $300. The second year, we flew to Ethiopia for $300. And this year, the place where everyone was going on their vacations because ch tickets were cheap was uh, Nepal. Okay. So for $300 every year, there seems to be something. And you can get lots of specials for Europe. We were from Poland, so we don't fly to Europe, but a lot of people go on vacation, and it's a couple hundred dollar tickets. Wow, good. Yeah. All right, so overall, what are some pros and cons of living in Saudi Arabia? Okay, so the pros are the money, the cons are living in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but you need the attitude that when you go to the bank and you get frustrated by lines and by people not being polite to each other and not standing in line and so on, you have to remember that this is why you're getting paid a lot of money. It's a trade-off. You can go to Thailand and live in paradise and teach English but not make any money. So if you want to save money and travel a little bit and pursue your hobbies and get driven to work and back, then... Saudi is not a bad place to be, really. All right, great. Kasha, thank you so much for telling us about Saudi today.